Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Honk your horns. Give God some praise. Just don't honk your horns. Open your mouth. Give God some glory. Come on. Right where you are, open your mouth. Offer up the sacrifice of praise from the fruit of your lips. Come on. Give God some glory with your mouth and your horns. If you're watching online, open your mouth. Lift your hands right where you are. Give God some praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The heavens are declaring his glory. Come on, worship the Lord in this place and give God some praise. Come on, give him some honor. Give him some glory. Give him some praise. Come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. Come on, worship him. In the beauty of his holiness, worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. For the Lord is good, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our drive-in service. We're so glad that you are here today. Those who are with us here on the lot, we give God praise for you. Those watching us online, we thank God for you for tuning in. If you're watching online, please share with somebody and let them know that we are on today. As we continue to celebrate the Lord, as we continue to come together virtually, but also here uh, in our vehicles, worshiping God, praising him for his goodness and his mercy. And all of his kindness, the Lord has kept us one more day. The Lord let us fall asleep. The Lord sustained us and he woke us up one more time. He's maintained our lot. He's kept us. He is the keeper of our lives, and we give him praise for that. Worship him right where you are. Feel worship. Worship him right where you are. Glorify him right where you are. Come on, give him praise right where you are. He inhabits the praises of his people. The Lord will sit down on you right in your car, right there with you in your house. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, and he is kind, and he is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this moment. We appreciate you for this time. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness. Have mercy on us, O God. According to your loving kindness and according to your tender mercies, we pray, Lord, like blind Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Come see about us today. Meet us on the roadside. Stop what you're doing, and Lord, call us to you so you can begin to make us well and make us whole. We give you praise today because we know to look, for, look to you. No one else we can look to. We look to you. And Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. This is your time. This is for your glory. We give you worship. We give you praise. You inhabit the praises of your people. I pray that you would touch us one more time. Move on our behalf one more time again. As always, we need your presence. We need the assistance of your spirit to do all that we need to do. So Holy Spirit, have your way today. Save somebody. Reclaim a backslider. I pray that you would heal bodies, heal minds. We believe that you're able to do it. Do what you're able to do. And like the leper, we know that you're able, but Lord, we're asking if you're willing. Please let your will be done in us as it is in heaven. Bless the worship. Bless the word. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise right where you are. Again, if you're watching online, please share. Let people know the wrong today. Come on, Brother Kyle. He's going to bless us with a song. Lord Bethany, amen. Come on, put your hands together wherever you are. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to, I love to praise. Come on, clap. Oh. To praise him, I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love. To 
to praise him. I love to, I love to praise. Oh, he's my rock. He's my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. He's my will in the middle. Just a jewel that I, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, I love to praise his name, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to, I love, come on, let's sing that again, oh, he's my He's my rock, oh, he's my will in the middle, oh, I know he'll never, never let me down, he's just a jewel that I, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, Just a jewel that I, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, oh, hallelujah, yeah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, I love to, oh, I love to, I love to, in the moment. saved. Amen. As we get ready to prepare for the word, we just want to offer a thank you to the Lord. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Economies down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you. I had some thankful folk. There are folks without homes living out in the streets. And the drug habits, some say, they just can't be. There are muggers and robbers, no place 
seems to be safe. But Lord, you've been my protection. Every, 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 every step of the way. And I'm going to lift my hands and say, thank you, Lord. all alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic with a tragic end but Lord you didn't see fit to let any of those things be every 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 day by your power you keep on, you keep on, you keep on keeping me. You ought to lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for, for me. Yeah, it could have been me doors with no food or no clothes just all alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but Lord you didn't see fit to let any of those things be Every, 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 every day by your power, you keep on, you keep on keeping me, and I'm so thankful, I'm going to lift my hands and say thank you, Lord, for all you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God some glory. If your testimony is, it could have been you. But because of the goodness of Jesus, you're where you are today. We ought to give God some glory in this place. Hallelujah. Thank Him for shelter. Thank Him for clothing. Thank you for food. Bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Bless his wonderful name. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so glad to see you once again. Amen. It's good. It's good to be at the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It is a beautiful day to be saved. Another wonderful day to have the Holy Ghost. It is just good to have the glory of God resting upon us. It's good to understand His mercy and His grace and to have a full relationship with God's Son. I'm just glad to be alive today. Amen. 
Everything else is inconsequential. When he woke you up this morning, you woke up in victory one more time. When you began to move around your house, your room, you were walking in victory already. And you could rejoice in the fact that this is the day that your God has made. And he has already begun to give you a reason to rejoice and be glad in it. We're getting ready to pray and um, release this word that God has given us for you. I want to remind you tomorrow we have a full day. 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and 6. Ten Times Better series is at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. We're asking all men and women to join us at 5.30 for the pre-service celebration. 5.30 for the 6 o'clock teaching. And then we'll have another discussion. For those of you who joined us for the COVID-19 panel last night at 7, uh, a whole lot of questions were answered. Sometimes when you don't know a thing, you fear a thing. We needed to know that this is the season for faith and wisdom. Faith and common sense. Don't let any weak preacher tell you that this spells the end of God's people in God's house. That's just coming from someone who has lost their faith. But we're coming out of this stronger and wiser, greater. We're coming out better. So when fear tries to develop from your doubt, you rebuke that doubt. And simply tell yourself, I believe God. And he said he would never leave you, nor would he forsake you. He said to cast all your cares upon him before he cares for you. Every good and pleasant thing that's coming to you will come from the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Somebody shout glory. Father, I bless your name once again for this opportunity. I thank you for your faithfulness and for that mercy that becomes more familiar and more appreciated every day. I thank you that you have not lost patience, but you're still allowing growth. You're still allowing transformation. I thank you when you saved, you saw what could become, you did not stay focused on what we were. So I thank you for keeping on working with us, for how when you never leave us nor do you forsake us, you continue to teach us and speak to us and minister to us, that we might become more than we've ever been before. I want to give you praise, honor, and glory right now because I appreciate your love more every day. It is that love that broke the yokes upon our lives. It's that love that retrieved us from the pits that you found us in. It was that love that comes to see about us. Thank you, Jesus, that you crossed a distance that was too far, us, far for us to cross gave up your seat in glory just to come down and live among us as Emmanuel. Thank you, Lord, that you wanted to live among us. That's why you sent us Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that when he came, he came with an assignment, a purpose, and a mission. And thank you, all of us that are in here today, here today, watching us tomorrow. All of us were on your agenda. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. 
I thank you that the day of opportunity arose in each of our lives. That day when we had a chance to say yes to you. When we lifted our hands and our heads and our voices. And said, Lord, I need you, not just every day, but I need you every hour. I give you honor right now because even when we resisted, you persisted in your assignment. You kept on working on us until you saved us. Kept on loving us until we submitted to you. Then you gave us your precious Holy Ghost that we might be able to obey and understand and begin to walk in the destiny that you have prepared for us. So now in the name of Jesus, I give you glory right now. For all that are assembled here today, all that have come together, for every car and everyone in every car, God, I thank you. For everyone watching this tomorrow, I say thank you. I give you praise right now because I'm declaring a move of the Holy Ghost in our midst this afternoon. Somebody's not feeling especially well, healed right now in Jesus' name. I plead the blood on every satanic attack today that the enemy that thinks we don't know it, but we know he's already defeated. I thank you, Lord, for power and for the glory you've shared with us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, God, bless our minds. Open our hearts. Allow us to hear, understand, and then become what you're going to show us today. I thank you for the reassurance of your word, the love of God himself, the assistance of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Savior whose name is Jesus. We speak that name in every situation. We destroy every yoke, upset every satanic plan. Every hindrance now is broken in the name of Jesus. We call it done. We call it received. We call it blessed. Call them overcomers in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And everybody made a sound that glory will hear. Hell will be intimidated and God will be pleased with. Lift up the trumpet sound in this place. Give God glory. We're not only here for a fight, but we're here to win today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. John chapter 11, if you will. John chapter 11, and we will start reading at verse 17. John chapter 11, verse 17. So glad to see so many of you out here today. As we continue in this series, what is becoming a life-altering series called Redefined. We start reading in the book of John at chapter 11, verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. 
But Mary was still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it you. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. I want to talk to you from the subject, He made a believer out of me. He made a believer out of me. I've come to the conclusion that um, if you're not cautious and careful, that life will attempt to label you. There are experiences in our lives that absolutely, in retrospect, as I look back critically, that one of the main objectives of my past was to label me in such a way that I would not think I was eligible for the future that God had promised me. And I believe what the enemy likes to work with is something we call guilt. But the enemy is not satisfied with God's people feeling guilty. What he wants is for us to adopt a label of shame. Because guilt is based on what we have done. Shame, however, is who we become. I need you to understand that today is the day that if you arrived to church this afternoon carrying some historic shame, the Lord is advising me to give you some advice. Leave your shame at the door. Whatever you've got to do, strip it off and let that shame go. God offers us salvation and forgiveness so we don't have to be labeled by our failures. Because failure will imprint itself on your mind and invade every thought, sabotage every opportunity, and destroy every significant relationship when failure has been imprinted on your mind, your heart, and your spirit. An individual who has been marked by failure has very little positive expectation. Bible lets me know when my heart becomes toxic that it becomes difficult for me to see anything good in anything or anyone I experience. So it is important for you and I to understand that when God saved you, he knew all your failures. And he knew he had power to overcome the label that our failures tried to put upon us. Now, I'm always amazed that people try to judge your present faith based on the condition that you see you going through. It is a dangerous thing to watch a child of God go through a season of challenge and then try to judge their faith based on their condition. I am clear today that there have been times in my own life, maybe not yours, that if I did not know Jesus for myself, 
my season, my condition, my circumstances would have convinced me that I didn't know God at all. Because sometimes what I'm going through does not look like Jesus knows me at all. I wish I was in the right church today. Because there are times in all of our lives where we have favor, but we just don't look like we do. Times when we have victory and it appears as though we're losing the fight. Times when we know we're healed of our past mistakes, but we feel like we're still wounded deeply by the things we experience. So there will be times when God has placed favor on your life that your spectators will not have the same perception you do. But let's go a little deeper. Sometimes I know I have favor, but don't feel like I have favor. Sometimes if I listen to myself, not you, but if I listen to myself, it seems to defy Scripture. Sometimes I feel like bitter and sweet water does come out of the same fountain. But when I feel that way, I've got to trust what God says and not what I feel. The other thing that will cause people to believe be under the, un, under the understanding, have the understanding that you and I are not in the will of God. It's something very common to us as a challenge, something I've talked to you about before. And I'm not sure I'm more mature than you in this way, but the timing of God still gets on my nerves. Amen, somebody. To me, he appears to be awfully inconvenient sometimes. He, he, he seems not to know what's going on based on how I'm analyzing my situation. Because I don't think if he was paying attention, he would allow some things to get as bad as they get. Okay, I can't get any real people out here. I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't expect that my enemies would get apparent victories if God was paying attention to my situation. And I realize it's not that he's not paying attention, but once again, I'm having a problem with not just the way he does things, but when he chooses to do them. Amen, church. I didn't get a breakthrough until I realized that for a believer, especially one that's mature, that God delays to strengthen my faith. God Almighty. Now, he does not do that when you're new with him. But the more mature you become, he starts to mess with timing so that your faith increases, not just for what you're going through, but for the additional assignments once you come out of your season of tribulation. Now, this helped me. I'm in the text. I'm really in the text. Watch this. This really helped me. Jesus is responding when he decides to help you. I didn't say when he moved to help you, because I get discouraged. We have to understand he's moving in your direction when he decides to help you. When he decides to help you, there is no apparent manifestation of the movement of God. But the manifestation of the answer 
is what many times discourages us. Because a lot of times I know he's present, but he hasn't. He's answering my prayer, but he has not answered my prayer. Watch how this works. So Lazarus gets sick. Mary and Martha send a, send a note to him, send a message to him. It is an illustration of prayer. He sends a message to Jesus. Jesus gets the message. And the text is clear. Jesus is coming. But in his coming, he does not appear to be answering Mary and Martha. Let me take you there again. So Lazarus gets sick. Jesus gets the message from Mary and Martha. It is an illustration for prayer. So the two of them agree that Jesus needs to know what's going on in their house with their friend named Lazarus. Jesus is coming. But it does not appear as though he's answered because there's nothing in the text that says, go tell the sisters I'm coming. So now they're in a place where they have to believe he's heard them but have to wait for him to show up. So he's answering, but he's not come yet. Watch how this thing works. He answers then with an appearance. He's around where he needs to be. Because Jesus shows them, for every child of God, proximity or the closeness of Jesus does not eliminate the process of Jesus. He's coming. This is so clear in the text to me. It blew my mind, Gary. He's coming, but not the way I want him to come. Watch this now. So it told me something. Favor sometimes does not shorten the process of my deliverance. The answer to my prayer immediately does not eliminate the process that God has decided. So what is my assurance? Our assurance is this. When we call him, Somebody's going to shout on this one. Nothing will stop him from coming. Hallelujah. We can be assured of this. When we have entertained his presence, when we have offered him the things that he likes. Did y'all hear what I said? When we have worshiped him and praised him and listened to his word and when when we have offered him things that he likes there will be safety in his will there is protection in his purpose now watch this he decides to answer the lady's prayer but Lazarus condition is diminishing as they're waiting. But they don't know that Lazarus is being protected. Uh, uh, he's being protected in the Lord's purpose. You need to hear me. The purpose of God will put you in protective custody. And no matter what it looks like, as long as you believe the Lord is on his way, Nothing will stop what God has decided. Now, what blew my mind was there appears to be a time when apparent harm will come to Lazarus. Because the Bible does tell us that he dies. I asked the Lord, why? Oftentimes. It will appear as though in a child of God's life, 
that apparent harm, when I say apparent, I mean as others who are watching your life judge harm, those who have no control of the outcomes perspective, people will think you're in danger when you're only in the will of God. Good God Almighty. I'm doing better than you responding. Because watch what's happening. He is the light. He is in the light. He walks in the light. And the light is coming to awake Lazarus out of darkness. But just like the morning, you must wait through the nighttime for the sun to come and wake you up the next day. So, so, the disciples are watching this transaction. And they are especially curious about the delay based upon what they know about the relationship between the two sisters and the brother. So the disciples are wondering, didn't he get the message? And if he did, doesn't he understand the urgency of what his friends have relayed to him? Jesus heard the prayer. He decided to come, but then he waited four more days. I asked the Lord why again. Sometimes when I want to do something phenomenal for my people, I have to wait till everybody thinks it's too late. I have to wait till everybody thinks there's no way out. Hallelujah. The collective testimony of Mary and Martha and the community confirmed the fact that Lazarus is in a way that cannot be helped. So the collective testimony of the sisters and the community define Lazarus. Jesus shows up. And the text doesn't make it plain, but I believe there was a little... Uh, chastisement in the sister's conversation. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Uh, if you had been here, you've been here so many other times, where were you this time? You usually get here as we're just feeling symptoms and you clear everything up. You get here at the beginning of trouble, but now the trouble has matured to a place that it is becoming a season for us. Where were you, Jesus? Where were you? If uh, you had been here. Watch this now. No longer blaming the illness and the death on the illness, but now blaming the death on the presence of Jesus. If you had been where I wanted you to be, this would have never gone down like this. So I said, Lord, what are you really saying? He said, you got to protect yourself against faith in a moment that has passed. God Almighty. Because faith in a moment that is past may hinder you from having faith in the moment that God wants to bless. Lord, have mercy. In your season of testing, you've got to accept being misunderstood. People will not understand the steadfastness of your faith and of your service, not understand your commitment. But when people doubt 
your walk, and when you doubt your own commitment, you better tell yourself it's the wrong time to quit. It's the wrong time to give up. It's the wrong time to throw up your hands and surrender. Now, sometimes when people are spectating your life, people will not understand the steadfastness of your faith, but they also will not understand the apparent, listen to my words, the apparent inappropriateness of your worship. The apparent inappropriateness of your worship. Because worship and praise often seem to be circumstantially inappropriate. How can you worship him after this has happened? Lazarus is dead. How can you receive a word from him when Lazarus is dead? Jesus repeats himself, repeating who he is. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. But they are still operating in a moment that has already passed. If you had been here, my brother had not died. Jesus said, did not tell you who I was. But they are still stuck in tears and blame. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's amazing how we can complain because we don't know the deliverance has already started. Good God Almighty. Your breakthrough is already underway and you're still complaining. Lord have mercy. The deliverance has started. But sometimes our circumstances can have us trapped in the darkness of our situation. Jesus is about to redefine Lazarus for his future. They're crying and they're moaning. They're complaining. And because Jesus is touched by the infirmities of those that love him, he groans within himself. But he moves while he's groaning. The man Jesus and the Holy Ghost are having a conversation. And Jesus is on the move. Even when he says, take the stone away. And they declare it's too late for Lazarus. By now he stinks. They have not removed the label on Lazarus, but Jesus is already seeing past the label. Too late for Lazarus, a label. Too far gone, another label for Lazarus. But they don't understand when Jesus started groaning, it was a language that only he and God could understand. He groaned within the spirit of himself. Watch how this works, and I'm almost done. God heard Jesus in Jesus groaning. He is communicating with God in that holy language that cannot be uttered. It must be felt. And he says something amazing. For the benefit of you, for the benefit of identity, for the benefit of relationship, for the benefit of those that don't believe, for the benefit of those who think you're too far gone. He doesn't call him his condition. He doesn't call him his sickness. He calls him his name. Now, I said he's redefining him, but I believe that once Lazarus heard his name in the grave. That after that day, 
When somebody called his name, he never responded the same way. Because now when he calls his name or hears his name, he remembers when he was dead and lost. Remembers when everybody said he was through. Because his name now stands for resurrection. Now stands for future. His name is different now because Lazarus is now born again. The tomb became his womb. Where Jesus redefined Lazarus. Now the text is clear. He comes out bound. Because if he's going to be born, he's got to be born wrapped up in sin. And the Bible says, they said, loose his hands for his brand new assignment. Loose his feet for the second phase of his journey. Uncover his eyes so his vision is restored. He would never see life the same way again. So God liberates Lazarus. But Lazarus has to use his own legs. And I'm closing now. God will rescue you. But you've got to use what he gave you to finish the assignment. He'll raise you from the dead. But you've got to walk out of the tomb on your own. He'll heal you and tell you, go wash your face. He'll heal you and tell you, rise up and walk. He'll deliver you, but you've got to use your legs to get it done. He redefines you. Gives you a new testimony. A new way of describing your relationship with him. I was lost. Now I'm found. Blind, but now I see, they used to say. Grace redefined Lazarus' life and gave Lazarus a brand new destiny. He was redefined, called the same name, but not the same person. If that ain't saved, I don't know what is. Called the same name, but not the same person. He is living in resurrection power. I believe Mary and Martha came to him and knew in their hearts they'd never doubt him again. And both of them held hands and told him, you made a believer out of me. Let's give God some glory in here. Perhaps there is someone with us today who does not know the Lord for themselves and you realize the labels of your past and your failures have tattooed your history on your heart and your mind. There's hardly anything you can approach without feeling not only the guilt but the shame that has marked you with the failures of your life. But you have heard something today, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that gives you an understanding that what God wants to do is remove the label by removing the shame. All of us can think of chapters in our lives that we were not especially proud of. Before we were saved, we were like that scripture that says, every man did what was right in his own eyes. But now, we've been walking to, with the Lord and he proves to us over and over again. That no matter how dire the situation is, no matter how your history has labeled you, no matter how many people walk up to you and confirm that your history is true, the Lord Jesus says, behold, all things can become new. 
Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all shall become new. If you're with us today, you don't know the Lord for yourself, but you've come to this drive-in service, we are so glad that you're here. So honored that you took the time to come and fellowship with us today. But this is decision time. You need to decide. I need to know this Jesus. These people have come out here for today. I need to know this Jesus. People have been making all this noise for today. I need to know this Jesus that Lazarus knew in Scripture. That one that can raise me from that place that has held me down. Raise me from a mindset. Raise me from a lifestyle. Raise me from a condition. Raise me from a condition of my heart, my mind, and my spirit. The Lord wants to resurrect you today. Give you back what you think you lost. Set you in a new path of destiny. That's you. Simply go on our website at go2bethany.com on your phone. Tell us, I want to receive the Lord. We'll get right back to you. And lead you step by step. Get you put in the right direction. Get you started with your classes so you can learn. If you don't learn, you won't change. Bible says, be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Got to download some new information so you can live a new life. As a man thinketh, as an individual thinks, so is he or she. So I want to invite you to get, give your life to the Lord to get saved. Or to come back to the Lord if you got saved at one time but you walked away. Or perhaps your decision today is, I need to be a part of this church. I need to be a part of this ministry. And you realize today, I need to make that decision now. Write us on the same site. Let us know. We'll take you through the process, get you connected, get you in the flow. We guarantee you, your life will begin to change. Just a few things. Those that will be watching online tomorrow, the giving options will be on the screen. Those that are with us in person, there are bins going out of the parking lot where you can share your gifts. Don't forget, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, 10 times better. Tomorrow morning, beginning at 8, and every hour up till 12, you can worship with us. And once again, if the weather permits, we'll see you next Saturday. Now, I'm getting ready to pray for you so we can touch and agree. The Bible reveals that the power of agreement is so strong that even when it's for the wrong reasons, you can accomplish almost anything you desire. There was a story called the Tower of Babel. Men have gotten together on the ground and said, we're going to build this tower straight to heaven. And the Bible says they're all speaking the same language, all have the same mindset. And they begin to build this tower. And God looks out and God says, we've got to go down there. They're of one mind and one voice. And they will be able to accomplish anything they want to accomplish. It is the revelation of the power of unity. So right now, we're going to touch and agree that if there's any sickness in these automobiles or connected to you in any kind of way, somebody you love, someone you care about, Someone you have befriended. There's any sickness at all. We come together and unite our faith. One voice, we believe Jesus. One voice, we believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. One voice, we believe in the faith of God. One voice, we believe in the power of healing. One voice. Anything can be accomplished. Go to those sick rooms. Go to the rehab. Go to the hospital, Jesus. Heal in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood on every situation. Hallelujah, God. I feel you right now. Blow the wind of the Holy Spirit through this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Send that healing. Send that breakthrough. In Jesus' name. 
May the peace of God pass us all understanding. Be yours now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody honked, amen.